So now we're going to play, we're going to play role play. You're going to be the IT experts, and I'm going to be the, the dumb customer. I'll be the dumb customer. So let me tell you my problem here. I've got one location here, a headquarters location. And I've done really well with my business. I've built this business up to multi-million dollar business and everything. My family's been driving, doing this business for 30 or 40 years. I've just been in one town though. But now I've decided I've got to spread out. I've got to do more. I've got a pretty good size headquarters location with a little data center thing going, all this, that, and the other. But I've got to get closer to my customers. Now I've got to, I've got to open five new offices in the next six months. I'm thinking that five in the next six months, a total of probably a dozen, 12, over the next 18 months. But I've got five locations that I really see that if I don't get in there, my competition's going to chew me up. So I'm going to have to, I know I'm going to have to buy this WAN thing. You know, I kind of think I know that. But because you guys are the Cisco experts, you know everything there is to know about networking. You got that pretty little badge that tells me that. I need you to tell me, what are the requirements at the branch? I want to make, I've got people working here who are very productive. I've spent a lot of countless years of money putting technology in here. What technologies am I going to have to place at this branch office to make this person as productive as that person? Because I've never done this before. Uh, I'm going to have about 25 to 35 people in each branch. What are you running in the HQ? Huh? What are you? Oh, I've got all kinds of applications. I got a bunch of applications, and people are using PCs and pads. And router with Linux acceleration. Excuse me. Router with Linux A router with WAN acceleration. Okay, so I'm going to need a router, and you said WAN acceleration. You can explain that to me later. That <laughs> sounds pretty. Pretty daggone expensive to me, but that's all right. All right. Uh, what else? What else am I going to have? We should start with your, with your necessities. Yeah. So yeah. If that person should be the same level of productivity as mm. the headquarters. So yeah. It, is, it has to be able to access the same resources, same mm -hmm. applications. Exactly, the same applications. Now, do I need to build a new data center over here? No. no. So, so, in order to achieve this, you uh -huh. should have a connectivity. Connectivity, so that's that WAN thing. So you're telling me what the WAN is. All right, so I, now I can connect back. That's good. I understand that. What other things am I going to have to buy here? Do you have MOI users? So have what? Do you have MOI users? Mobile? Oh, yeah, yeah, we use all these things. Nobody sets anywhere anywhere where they're supposed to anymore. So I'm going to have to, you say wireless, like, access points? Wireless LAN. All right. What else? Now, by the way, I do point of sale at these sites. I want to do point of sale. I'm going to have customers walk in. We need to secure the wireless. Oh, so I'll need some kind of security. Now, what kind of security might I want to do? So if they're coming in, mm -hmm. log on to it. Yeah. All right, so I'll have to have identity, identity, identity services, AAA services, things like that. By the way, uh, I know I have to be compliant with uh, these credit card people. Man, yeah, this PCI, man, it, a headache. God, it hurts me. And they, they require something called, uh, I know we had it there, IPS. And some of these people might want to work from home. When they're local, like if we have snowstorms or things like that, if they could access the network from home like we do back here. So maybe kind of VPN services. And we'd like to connect up to that thing called the internet worker or whatever it's called, internet. Yeah. So I might want to have a firewall there. Yeah. So. Mm. And of course you should be mm. able to spend less money on the long distance calls. So yeah. You have an IP oh, so you're, so I'm going to need some voice, worry about voice. So I. I'm going to need a, something to provision voice. So 
So they'll actually have phones, <laughs> right? And then, I guess if I have phones, I gotta have voice messaging of some sort. Jeez. And I have to connect up to that public switch telephone network so I can call out, especially 911, because, you know, got these people who fall all over the place and need the ambulances and stuff. Excuse me? Okay, all right, so that would do this, a communications manager? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. What else? WebEx and Jab. All right. So Web WebEx for meetings. And yeah, and Jabber. All right. Uh, I don't know what these are, but I hear Jabber's free, so I like that. <laughs> yeah. Video. Oh my God! You're killing me. <laughs> it's smaller than <laughs> smaller. It's getting smaller by the time. Oh my God. You know, and because I'm doing point of sale, I'm going to have to put some kind of servers out here because if this WAN goes down, I'll still want to take people's money. I want to do that. POE. Oh, jeez. Um, you're killing me. You know what you just did? No, you just defined the ISRG2 router. What if I told you we could do all of this? But by the way, you forgot something. What about a switch? <laughs> Need that, right? Yeah. You just defined what the ISRG2 was defined to do. We've got one box that will do all of this at one time. One box that does all of this at one time. The ISRG2 routers. They do it all. ISR Integrated Services Router, G2's Generation 2, and they're defined to do that. How has Cisco kept their edge? Somebody over here said innovation. You said innovation. Let me tell you some of the innovative things. Routers connect to similar networks. Absolutely do. Connect this WAN to this LAN. But guess what? We want to do more. Inside of our ISRs, We've got all kinds of really cool things that we've built into these things. So let's just think about on the motherboard, we got a multi-core processor that drives the whole shebang, right? It runs iOS. We have our iOS has a lot of capabilities in it here. Our iOS is our operating system. In hardware on every ISR that you buy, we put VPN and firewall capabilities on every router. Now somebody over here said ASA. You said ASA, didn't you? The same chips that are in the ASA to do the firewall actually are on that board. The same chips. Why wouldn't even enterprise class customers just go and buy this? Well, because it doesn't do the... It? It's scalable for... 100, 200 people. But beyond, but beyond that, you get bigger boxes that have to do more. Couldn't you just add another one? Well, yeah, but then you'd have device sprawl, right? Clunky. Yeah, it's clunky. We're, you know, the biggest ASA does about you know, 20 gig of firewall, <laughs> right? And, and you need that in some of these big customers. How many of those would it take? This thing does, let's say, 185 meg. How many of those are we going to have to have? It's designed to provide all of these services at the branch. It's where it's designed to go. So you don't have to have all of these customers do all, have all these different products. So for your WAN acceleration, Cisco WAS, Cisco WAS, there's two places you can get it here. You can either, it's in iOS that you can just turn on and try it for 30 days free. It's in iOS for small sites. If you need more, we actually have a server that you can put in there and actually run it in a server inside of that. Let me show you one of these boxes. We, they come in multiple sizes. Here's, I'll show you. Here's what they kind of look like. This is all one I just got out of a lab here at, and everything. Here's the size of one, one of these. It's modular. You have these little connections here, these littler connections, and then you have these bigger connections. These are called EHWICs, and these are called network modules, 
or SREs, service ready engines that go in here. Servers, in essence, that go in here. And they come in sizes like this, or they come in bigger sizes, if you need more. Like this. Like this. Depending on what you need. Depending on what you need. And you put in it what you want. So, let's look at this real quick, right before lunch. Built into all of these, we have one image of iOS. So if you want to turn on security, the security aspects, uh, the IPS, the VPN, and the firewall, all of that is turned on by a license. It's in the box, it's ready to go, it's just you buy the feature set, buy the license key, and it turns it on. All of a sudden now, you can do VPN and encrypt. You can do that encryption across your MPLS if you want to with this. You can do your firewall, do connecting to the internet, and you can, you can do IPS in there. It does all of your security stuff that you would normally do instead of buying separate boxes for these small number of people. So that's just a license key that does that. Now your AAA server and everything could either ride here in a server, virtualized, or it could be back at headquarters and you could just forward everything back there if you wanted. Uh, wireless LAN. You could actually put a wireless LAN controller in this box. Yeah, bless you. You can actually put a wireless LAN controller in this box. And it can support Inside of it, I think uh, we actually have a smaller processor, the daughter card that goes on there, and I think it supports 10 access points. 10 access points of wireless LAN controller and the, what we call the ISM, the internal server that rides in inside of it. 10 access points. That's probably plenty for my, my needs. For my needs. Uh, let's see, voice. Inside of iOS, we have a product called Communications Manager Express, CME. And depending on the size of the router, this could be your voice switch. I can provision voice and everything inside of that. It comes in all the ISR routers, depending on the size, for up to 450 phones or video devices. It'll do call setup and control for voice and video solutions in our that. So you could put a TX200 uh, uh, and, and let it provision it off that for this device if you wanted to. So it does your call setup and control inside the iOS. How do you do it? How do you turn that on? You license it. <laughs> you license it. On the motherboard, we have the ability to do DSPs, digital signaling processors, that terminate PSTN connections, that can actually build video bridges and things like that inside the router. There's hardware that goes in there. You have to do that through hardware today. And we can actually, those will be on the motherboard to be used. We have the ability to put in these little EHWICs, connections to the PSTN, connections to the WAN. The same one probably could have a connection to the internet. If I want to put analog phones, you know, you still have to have for fax machines or the emergency phone and everything. I can put analog phones, up to four analog phones on one of these little bitty slots right here. I can put four analog phones right there if I want. I can terminate two PRIs right there in that little slot. Two PR. Actually, we can do four now. Four PRIs in that little slot, which would be 96 phone calls to the outside world. Uh, connecting to WebEx and everything. We're going to put MSIs in this thing so it can actually troubleshoot those. It's actually media net capable. Uh, for video, supports video. It could, it could actually be H323 uh, set a, a controller. Uh, to, uh, it can do all that. Uh, and PoE. It offers PoE. You can order them and they'll provide power over Ethernet and supports energy wise so you can manage it. Media net capable. Yes, sir. So, putting servers into them, can you put a standard x86 server into them? Yes, yes. Matter of fact, I told you where the three architectures converge is this guy. So if you think about it, here's borderless, here's collaboration, 
There's actually, through uh, in our uh, data center we'll talk about today, they have the B series, the C series, now we have the E series that go in this. Yes, you can actually you can actually hook a uh, uh, we can have a an array hang on right off this, a NAS array. What's the difference between that and a B six K? Business edition six K. A business edition six K is a virtualized server that has all of our communications manager and everything for up to a thousand users. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But this is a router. Really quickly, I, I got five minutes before lunch, and I'll show you this first, uh, and then I'll let you go to lunch. Did she hand out the ticket yet? No. Well, I guess we're not going to lunch until she does that. So you guys are stuck with me, and I'm all excited now. See you. How do you think you pulled up these things? www.cisco dot com slash go oh if I can spell it right go routers at our branch office our routers the ISRs are your best friend they are oh I'm sorry uh, they are absolutely the best product Cisco has as far as I'm concerned it's where all three architectures meet. They're where all three architectures meet. And the, boy, this is very difficult for our... So we'll start with the, uh, the 800 series. Now, what router did they send you for your CVO? 800 series router, wasn't it? Probably an 890 series. That's an ISR G2. Has built-in capabilities in it. Has that VPN, has firewall, all that stuff. But for small home offices, that's the 800 series. I'm going to show you something a little bit bigger. You got the 1900 series. You have the 2900 series. Notice the nines in that. And then the 3900 series. And let's look at one of the 3900 series. I fixed this problem, by the way. Ah, here we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. Now, this is the AM side. This is what AMs like to see. And here's what SEs like to see. There's two different sides of that router, right? So in this router, again, notice the switch ports. If you have a customer who has all these, we could actually put several switch ports. In a 3900 series router, we can actually have, I think it's over 72 switch ports in the router if you just want to make it a big, for switch ports and do power over Ethernet on all the ports. Now in this case, they've used this, and they put 48 switch ports in it. So if I had 35 people in the office, probably be enough, right? Probably be enough for that office. And they can, this could be layer three switching. It's actually taking the, the chassis or the case off of a 3560 switch and putting it inside of this router. So it doesn't take the processor to do the routing. It has its own ASICs and router on the, what I put in there so it doesn't take away from the, the router itself. Yes, sir. No, no. The supervisor, in essence, is the iOS running on, the, on this processor. So there's no concept of redundancy in this box? Uh, well, you can get redundant power supplies. That's yeah, yeah, power. yeah. And re redundant power supplies, yeah. So you have this in there. So uh, I told you that there's uh, services. The service-ready engine is, in essence, a server. In this case, they have a multi-core processor. Uh, you can have a, a terabyte of hard drive space on it. Let me move this out of here. So you can see. In essence, it's a server that slides in there. It gets its power and its Ethernet connection from the, where it slides in. And it's got, you can load anything you want to on it. On the E-Series, VMware actually supports the E-Series. So I think they have, I can't remember how many processors. You know, I have four processors and 48 gig of of RAM on this and it and it's supported by VMware so you could actually run multiple machines on it multiple applications that's kinda cool what's that do? what does it does you can you see where this would give us maybe a little bit of competitive advantage at that branch 
just a little bit. Again, we have, uh, let me go back to reset. We zoom in, you can see the EH wicks, the little connectors. These are EH wicks here that go on here. Uh, all the different things that go on this box. It can do all of that. One device can do all of that. How many competitors would it take to do this? I might have to have somebody give me a router. I might have somebody give me wireless, separate. I might have to have somebody give me some security devices. Somebody give me my voice solution. Somebody give me my video solution. Somebody give me something else. You can have seven different vendors to support all your technologies, or you could have one vendor support it. And don't tell me, oh, I want a best of breed solution. We're number one in routing, we're number one in switching, we're number one in wireless LAN, we're number one and two in all these categories here, we're number one in voice. <laughs> we're generally the only person that does power, number one in power over ethernet ports and all that. Number one across the board. So I say if you don't use Cisco, you're not getting a best of breed. And one call fixes it all. One call fixes it all. How many times, well, I can, can't tell you how many times me as a customer, when I had a problem that involved multiple vendors, I picked up the phone and called one and said, I think this is a problem. And they said, oh, it's not my problem. It's this other guy's problem. I call him, oh, it's not my problem. It's that guy's problem. And if I don't hit conference, this ain't ever going to get fixed. It's this. It's this. Problem's leaving here fine. Right, kind of thing. This is just, how many people walked into this room knowing this? That these boxes would do all this? Oh, one or two, yeah. Yeah. This is just the most amazing product. It's such a competitive differentiator. It really is. It is really a competitive differentiator. And we have the, I mean, this, this defines Cisco of what we can do. It's, this is the intersection point for all three architectures on one box. On one box. And it gives us the, the thing about, I tell people, is it's sold at headquarters, but it never lives there. You don't put these boxes at headquarters. It's sold there. You can sell, you should be able to sell this easily at headquarters, but it never lives there. Push it out to the edge. This is why we have such a high market penetration, market share at the edge. Because we just didn't stop at routing, connecting. We innovated. We innovated. And this is, and, and again, this is the greatest place in the world to lease these things. To lease these things. So. But, but Juniper sells their J-Series. Oh, I love that. Juniper sells their J-Series. Tell me what they do. Help me, help me understand All right. they don't offer the wheel. Do they offer any voice? Do they, they do not. Can you provision phones on their okay, so they do voice over IP? Uh, voice over IP. Oh, they yeah. In their second generation of J series, their first generation, they did. They do voice over IP, so they connect you up to the PSTN. Can they create a video bridge? No. I'm asking, what's the difference? Yeah. What the yeah. difference, the difference is. Say, they'll, they'll, yeah. say, oh, absolutely. So absolutely. Can, can they do wireless LAN inside of their box? No, they can't. They've got wireless LAN, but it's not integrated into their solution as of yet. They do not do it. Can they do any voice and video? No, they cannot. They cannot do any of this. They cannot provision phones. They cannot set phones. They can't do all that. Do they do power over Ethernet? Can they do high density switching? No, they can't. No, they can't. They can't do it. They're a router. They're what Cisco was. They do a faster processing, I give them that, than, uh, than we had back then. But they're no better than our routers were in 1998. Because in 1998, I was doing voice over IP on a Cisco router. Cisco had a whole set of routers that did, did what they did. Voice, voice, video, wireless, the server. Do they do a server in there? I don't think they do. I, don't th I know they don't have a server in there, and I know they don't have a virtualized server in there. Yeah. Believe me, 
Now, that goes back to a little interesting story. My next door neighbor uh, works for Cisco, uh, and he's, he's one of these guys who do the, the coating of the actual box itself. I mean, he's one of these really deep guys. I come home one day, and it was uh, after I'd left Cisco. I came home one day, and he, uh, we had the ISR G1 series, Generation 1, and he uh, went out, and I started mowing my yard. He came home, and he started mowing his yard. So I finished up, and I went out and got a couple of beers, and I stopped him, and I just handed him a beer, and we started talking. He goes, I got put on a new project at Cisco. I said, really, you did? And he goes, yeah. And he said, I said, what is it? He says, we've got to re replace the ISR G1s. I said, really? Now, the ISR G1s did most of this, not all of it. didn't have the servers and things like that that we have, all the capabilities, but it was a really good box. And he goes, yeah, Juniper's got the J-Series router. Our router only does 500,000 packets per second, and the J-Series does 750,000 packets per second. I said, really? He says, yeah, man, we're in trouble, Cisco. We're in real trouble. I said, Mickey, his name's Mickey. I said, Mickey, let me tell you this. If I was selling into a customer and I couldn't outsell, if, other than a service provider, who routing makes a bigger difference to, if I was putting this in an enterprise account and J-Series 1, Cisco should cut my fingers off one at a time with a, with a dull, dull knife because I'm not worth, a, worth anything. There is no way Juniper would ever beat me in this space. No way. The only way they could do it is if they were doing something highly illegal inside of that account. Because there's no way Juniper routers are going to beat me here. They can't do this stuff. There's so much value here. Juniper's been trying to get in there. A lot of companies doing it. Huawei has got a, is, is doing this, right? Well, they're copycats, right? They've copied this and they're trying to do it. They can't even beat Cisco in a lot of places with this. Because customers know that they might be not as good as they think they are with their solution. I'm sure you guys see Huawei in Australia. Yeah. But this, this, is a, this is a definite differentiator. Probably the largest differentiator of any one thing that we do. We might have products who are that much better, but this whole product line is that much of a differentiator. So We've already started looking at some of the differentiators that we have here in our product set. Now, we have to start thinking about and. The, the website is a perfect example of how we may start thinking about placing routers and the requirements for routers uh, in our, uh, for our customers. Uh, if we go back to this routers, Cisco's got really three different groups of routers that we'll, say, we'll, we'll talk about two of the three. But... Uh, you're talking about the branch office. And at the branch office, a totally different requirement than at the headquarters. Again, a headquarters location, a bigger location, they're not going to have a router that does their voice and everything. We're not going to combine everything into one. It'll, we'll have separate routers and separate boxes to do it. But as we scroll through our product set here, we'll see that Cisco's got a uh, plethora of products that go in this. So again, back to the branch office. Uh, our routers here, the ISR G2 routers, and again, uh, there is a uh, da, 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 da. You know, they've got a nice little PDF here, so you can see all the different uh, routing platforms that we have in the ISR family, uh, what they will support, what they won't support, and I'm going to try to do a view. I don't know if you folks can see this. And there we go. So, on our ISR G2s, as you look on this nice little spreadsheet kind of PDF that we have up here, it starts at the 3940, uh, 3945E and goes all the way down to the 1941s and even further down into the 800 series, the CVO, Cisco. Uh, Cisco's home routing solution. Uh, but uh, 
depending on the form factor and the need. And look at all the different, you know, we can do stateful firewall across all the line. Now again, customers are going to connect up to the internet. They need a stateful firewall. It's embedded in the product and hardware, actually the same ASIC that goes in the ASAs are there. Uh, hardware uh, VPN acceleration for uh, all the encryption, absolutely across the line. Uh, intrusion prevention, yes. Uh, content filtering, yes. All of these routers have Again, different features that do that. Uh, for voice, doing local conferencing, being able to do voice and video DSP supports, creating voice bridges, video bridges, converting traditional telephony into packetized telephony. Uh, doing all that, certainly we have a lot of support for that. Uh, we'll talk about SRST tomorrow. Uh, Communications Manager Express, this is PBX functionality. And we can support from, you know, all the way up to 450 phones, depending on the size of the box that you would place in there. Uh, uh, Unity Express is voice messaging. Uh, SIP, being able to have SIP sessions, being able to have a SIP termination for your uh, connectivity to the, for voice and, vi uh, voice and video calls. We can support those across the line. Uh, digital voice support, again, this supports up to 660. PRIT1 connectivity, so it's quite a, quite a uh, chunk of those. And again, uh, FXS, FXO connections all across the board. So our, our ISRG2s are designed to provide all of these services in one solution, branch in a box kind of thing. That brings simplicity to the solution when a customer wants to roll out, when they want to have that full powered branch, when they want that branch user to be just as productive as that headquarters user where he's got all the bells and whistles inside the organization. So again, uh, these boxes, and again, they're, uh, uh, they're a true differentiator for what Cisco can provide, the ISR G2s. And the price of these things, I'll, I'll just give you an example. We talk about the price of technology going down. Uh, my wife has Talbots, I have Cisco. So when I was an SE at Cisco, I specialized in voice. And one of the things I like to do is play around with voice at home and do all this, that, and the other, all these cool things. So we had, uh, two generations ago, we had a router called the multi-service router, the 2600 series. So we had the 2600 series, we had the 2800 series, which was the ISRG1, and the 2900 series is the ISRG2. So back in the ISR, uh, the multi-service router days, I wanted to do voice and do all kinds of testing and everything. And the base price for the router that I chose, which was a 2691, the base price of the router with nothing on it, nothing on it, no upgrades, no hardware, no anything, was $6,495, this price. Now, you know, employees get deep discounts and everything. So, my wife, you know, she's always, I've always, how much are you spending at Talbot's, all this? Well, I went out, I fixed, dressed one of those things up for what I thought I would need in my personal lab. And it ended up being just shy of $4,500 with my very deep employee discount. It so had a lot, add a lot of stuff. Uh, for an example, just to add VPN to that router cost $1,500 less price because back then we didn't build the VPN capability uh, in it, we had to add it to it. And it was $1,500 just for that list price. So it was an expensive little box. Well, I got one. Of course you need at least two. So the first time my wife never even knew it happened. So I could still talk about Talbots. So the second time I went and got the same router so I could have two of these things, she caught me. So for about a year, I couldn't say the word Talbots in any kind of negative connotation uh, and everything. That same router, when the ISR G1s came out, the same router with four times the capabilities of, as far as processing packets, four times as much, at least four times as much, uh, with baked in VPN technology, baked in, uh, firewall technology, all those technologies baked in where I didn't have to pay $1,500 for it. The base price for that router, even with those technologies baked into it, went down to 
at $95 list price. Almost half price for the same, or for four times the capabilities. And now the ISR G2s come out, they again at least double, if not triple, the processing power and the capabilities, and they cost the exact same price. So what's the cost of this technology doing? <laughs> yeah, it's going down. It's going down. Means if I had leased, if I was a customer and I had leased that multi-service router and then wanted to transform my business or do more for my business at the edge and wanted to go back to the next generation, what would have happened to the cost of that lease for me? <laughs> it would have went in half and I got four times the box. And then I could have got two times the box, maybe even downsized the router and got on the next lease. So that's why I think leasing is a, is a very good option for our customers because the price of this basic technology seems to be keep going down and down and down. So especially at this branch, these branches, think about it. The branches, is, we talk about mobility, but we also need to think about 80% of, of most of our customers, the people don't work at headquarters. They're never working at headquarters. I mean, how many people here work at headquarters? We're always working out. And with mobility, it's going to, that number is, is probably very low for what we, we really want to do. We want to enable our customers, but we want to enable them with the technology where they're at, not to force them to come into a building. The ISR G2s are a, a huge, uh, uh, huge place for us to be able to bring value. And for all those people who, you know, we talk about all the different parts and pieces and everything that go, that go along. And unfortunately, we have all these parts. I just want to show you this is not a comprehensive list by any way, shape, or form, but this is just some of the things that can go inside of the ISR G2 routers. And I'll just scroll through. We have uh, HWICs for CDMA. All, you can see all the different things we can do. We can do uh, uh, VDSL connections for customers if they want to use that. Uh, we have the SREs, the service ready engines, which are servers that go in it. We have uh, uh, WAS appliances for application acceleration. Uh, we have the ability to do 72 FXS connections on a, on a server for, to be able to put uh, analog phones out there. Uh, all of these parts go into these modular routers. And we can just continue to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You see why we have as many part numbers as Walmart? That's just for the ISR G2s. That's just for the ISR G2s. And that's not a comprehensive list. We actually have more than we do. Uh, as we step up to the network edge, we have our ASR, aggregation services router. So you have all these branch offices out here. Now we have to aggregate those back at headquarters because everybody's going across, back from a branch back to headquarters and connecting up. That's where all of our data centers are going to be and all that. You're going to have bigger bandwidth there and different requirements. Again, the ASR1000 is our, the router we'll talk about there. And again, it comes in several different models. You have the 1, 2, 4, 6, and 13 uh, models that go in there. And Cisco, again, this goes back to the uh, the requirements of routing. Cisco, you know, this uh, SDN, where people are going to put routers on servers, absolutely, there's going to be some places that that's going to work. But at the edge of a large network, an enterprise network, that's not going to work. You're going to have to have something that's got a lot more capabilities than your average server is going to be able to do in today's world. So some of the things that we actually have is, uh, well, let's just go here to this guy. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, does, does up to 100 gigabits of uh, services, 40 gigabits, uh, and all this, and I think there's a 3D. I'm trying to find one little comment that they have here on this. We used to have a 3D model of these things here somewhere. might be in the data sheets section. 
Da, 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 da. Be sick. Looking for that. I thought I saw it somewhere. Well, probably not. But the ASR router actually uses something that Cisco took a lot of time to do. And uh, uh, we actually had to create our own processor for these routers. Cisco spent millions, millions of dollars to create our own processor. It's called the Quantum Flow Processor. The Quantum Flow Processor. It's a processor because routing, the, the, what, what, when you're doing things in a routing, you have to do a lot of things at the same time. And this, it was starting to be developed before you had all these multi-core processors that Intel and everybody's coming out with. So Cisco had to create their own. So we did. So we created a 40-core processor, the Quantum Flow Processor, that drives our ASR product line. So the ASR... 1000, the ASR 9000, the ASR 5000 all use the quantum flow processor. It's got 40 cores. Each core has four threads, so you have 160 threads of capability inside of these products. It cost, it took about five years for Cisco to get this, this out the door and a lot of R&D. Why? Because we knew that next, next generation edge router for an enterprise is going to have to do a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So they came up with the, uh, the quantum flow processor. Now for service providers, this is an edge router on a, maybe an edge router on some of your service providers' uh, uh, networks. Excuse me? Where was it? Was it up? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, embedded services, yeah. These routers initially started out, uh, it was replacing a router that did about 2 million, packets per uh, 2 million packets per second. Now they do 100 million packets per second. Uh, what started out as a router that would do about 10 gigabit of throughput now does 160 gigabit of throughput on its way to 320 gig of throughput on the edge of your network. Again, you're going to need more and more bandwidth, more and more capabilities on the edge of your network as we do video, as we do all these different things. And what, what Cisco's done is we have uh, uh, the processor sets on one card and it's really separate from the data plane. It actually, we, it, it, uh, it actually goes down, we have an embedded services processor which is where the quantum flow processor actually lives and the main board, the main processing card actually programs the quantum flow processor. So it's not even, so it does updated routes for routing tables and all the things like this and any changes are go on, but it's actually separate from actually what's going on in real traffic. And it gives us the availability to do a lot of different things across the board for these routers. So uh, this is, you know, we were, uh, I, I think it's one of the best products that Cisco's came out with. I will tell you, it did come out late. We let the 7200 series routers live out there just a little bit too long, its predecessor. But uh, this is a huge, huge uh, flow for a uh, product set for us. Uh, the different models we have and all the different interfaces. Uh, and that would be at the headquarters location. It's not going to live at a branch. Certainly not going to live at a branch. Uh, if we go back a little bit. Look at this. They must, the, the web guy had to be crazy. What'd they put the Catalyst 6500 in there for? Why would the Catalyst 6500 be in a router? Excuse me? Yes, there are modules on it. The Catalyst 6500 was, it fit the bill for what Cisco needed. We had, you know, all these different router product lines, but we had a little hole in our portfolio. We had the what we call the GSR, the gigabit switching router, which is a huge, huge box for service provider, a core box for service provider. We had the 7200 series router, which was way down here, and we needed something in the middle. So a Cisco actually took the Catalyst 6500 and its capabilities and actually made a router out of it. And actually a lot of service providers use this on their edge because it'll do 450 million packets per second and it can connect up to any kind of network you want. So the Catalyst 6500 has actually lived a couple of lives. The original, uh, what they called this, because they wanted to change the name, because service providers didn't like the name of Switch, 
uh, at the time. They called this the uh, OSR, optical switching router for Cisco, and sold it and it had the exact same cards as the Catalyst 6500 in it. They just ran a new train of iOS so service providers could do some really cool things in there. But the Catalyst 6500 has actually uh, been a functioning part of a, a service provider's network for many, many years. So it, it, again, it's the Swiss Army knife of, uh, of products for Cisco. And then if we go up a little bit further, I won't delve into this too much, but uh, we have these models, the CRS3, and I think they've got some numbers here. This is designed to go, it's 100, we're shipping 100 gigabit Ethernet connections to our service providers today. 100 gigabit connectivity, that core, that IP core, their connections between their main facilities and all that that are going, that's 100 gigabit connections, multiple ones of those to be able to do that. Now that we're actually moving that technology into the data center as well because that's where customers need it as well. But the CRS3, a solution for this, actually one solution can support up to 322 terabytes of throughput. Terabytes of throughput. These things are very expensive, but this is what's building the IP core of a service provider. So when service providers have their edge, where the people connect up, where radio networks live and all this, that, and the other, when they shove everything across the core of their network, they have to have a lot of bandwidth. And this is the product that originally came out at about 92 terabytes, and we actually upgraded it to 322 terabytes about 18 months ago. So the CRS3 is the, is our core IP router, uh, follow, followed by, uh, we go back one page, I think, the 9000, which is, a, again, a product that is a bigger brother of the 1000. And it does, uh, I think it does what, it does about, so, so, was it 90 terabytes I saw at one point? 96 terabytes, yeah. It does like 96 terabytes of throughput on, on this product. And that's what service providers have to do. Anything you think about uh, of a business, of, a, of even a, you know, it takes a very large enterprise. <laughs> you know, big inter enterprise network is very complicated, a lot of data. It's nothing compared to a service provider. Can you show a picture of that? Yes, yes. Here's what they look like. Yeah. It's, a, it's heavy metal. It's heavy metal. Yeah. No, you have to understand when, when, you're, when you're from the edge of a network, you're going to have at the edge of a network, you're going to have customers who are bringing on uh, MPLS, right? So I'm going to have an MPLS switch on the edge of my network. I'm going to have a radio area network that's going to be moving calls across. I'm going to do that. Everything is IP. So we, they're, they're not going to have a separate network for this, a separate network for that. It's all IP. This will probably, for, for some of our mid-tier or smaller service providers, this might be their core, building their core. Uh, for the larger customers, they'll go to the CRS3. But for a larger service provider, the 9000 is actually an edge. <laughs> it's actually an edge router. And again, they, you, they look at routing, service providers look at routing as the only place where I can provide intelligence. They want to do everything on a router, where in enterprise we actually do a lot more on a switch. They have a different, different philosophy around that. But, uh, and, and again, uh, you understand we sell a lot more switches than routers, two time, you know, over two times, the, around two times the router. Well, it's because for, I mean, think about it. I'll sell, at a headquarters, I'll sell maybe hundreds of switches in one building. I'm only gonna have one router there, or four routers there. That ratio, that's why the, the cost. Uh, the difference in the, in our revenue streams. So on the video side, how does that then work? On the video side? Well, on the video side, you're going to have the, the video components on the edge of this. And this is going to be actually the device that, that will see its video, prioritize it as a video, and put it in a, in a connection there. But it's, it's, it doesn't really care if it's video or not. It's just, it's just basically yeah. IP. It's IP, exactly. exactly. Now, will we'll, the, edge, the edge device, the entry device for that video stream, 
it's going to mark that and say this is video and put it in a stream that is has all the requirements to fit video. It's got to get there quickly, guaranteed bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera, into the flows that these guys have across their uh, packet core. But this, uh, depending on the service provider, and unfortunately, you know, we, do, we don't do a, uh, a lot there, a lot in this class for service provider. Uh, there will be customers, there's enterprise customers who, who use these as well. I mean, our, our GSRs, Ford, GM, a lot of our bigger customers actually use those. And they had their own MPLS network internally. <laughs> they created their own MPLS internally so they could guarantee services. IT could guarantee services to all the business units and all this, that, and the other. And they had, you know, they had a small service provider running inside, or even a mid-sized service provider running inside their enterprise. So we certainly like to sell these things. So again, the routing products that we look at, it depends on what the customer wants. And I'm gonna put this, there we go. Uh, and we have, to, we have to be able to make a reason for customers to want our, want our routers. Because if, no, we're not the cheapest. <laughs> But it's the most intelligent device out there. Our ISR G2s at the edge give us a very, very good competitive advantage. If you were a business leader like I played, wouldn't it be better for you to be able to say, listen, we can give you all those capabilities in one box versus you having multiple vendor contracts, all this, that, and the other. How much faster is it going to be able to roll out? Much quicker, much quicker. The store of oper the, the 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 person in charge of store operations, you know, whether it be a VP, a director, or whatever, they may be interested in that one box solution if they're worried about rolling out quickly. They may be want to know about that. Now you'd never go up there and say, "Hey, I got the ISR," but I'd ask them what their capabilities. What's your concerns? Oh, we're trying to grow, trying to grow our business, and we want to roll out quickly, quickly, quickly. This might tie directly into it. What are the capabilities you're doing? You might talk about video or wireless or security or mobility or the store of the future or whatever it is. But once you have that conversation and everything, a great way to say, well, yeah, you're going to have to line up a lot of vendors for that or maybe we can have a solution that will actually provide all of it for you. Introduce the risk and alleviate the risk almost in the same minute, which would be nice. Because they're thinking about it. They're thinking about how can I grow quickly and how can I get reliability out of it. And that goes back to, hey, maybe you need services with that. Maybe you need you know, help with that. Maybe your IT organization can't even do it. So there's a lot of things that we can, we can roll back out. I fully believe that the ISR G2 is, prob is our most uh, le legitimate explanation of the three architectures. When we look at it, it is the true intersection point of those three architectures that we have and provides true differentiation.